Final Fantasy XIV Shadowbringers is a game that needs no introduction. But you know what? Screw it. I'm gonna do one anyways. XIV is often described as being a theme park MMO, and no expansion seems to have embraced this more than Shadowbringers. While connected to the rest of the park, Shadowbringers feels uniquely isolated, separate from the rest, by nature of its design and its role in the story, and what we get is a journey that recreates that vacation mode feeling. There's the anticipation and build up to the trip, the excitement of being someplace new and unfamiliar, the thrill of having an adventure with friends, and the illusion of being in a reality divorced from real life. Eventually, the trip ends, goodbyes must be said, and then you're back, back to the grind, back to everyday life. Changed by your experiences and the people you met, but also an acknowledgement that they exist in a space all their own, straddling the lines between real and not. If this doesn't make sense to you now, don't worry. You'll understand after playing through the game. With that said, buckle up and keep your hands, arms, legs, and feet inside the train at all times. We're going for a little ride. Before we go any further, let's address one of this expansion's greatest adversaries, hype. It's everywhere, it's in the marketing, it's on the internet, and it's perpetuated by the many, many players who have finished this game. The community resoundingly praises Shadowbringers, and you know what? They have good reason to, which we will explore. But when you keep hearing people say things like, this is the best Final Fantasy story ever, this is the best MMO expansion I've ever played. Just wait until you get to Shadowbringers. It's hard to keep your imagination and expectations from running wild. Hell, even just watching the trailer with the volume on hits you in the feels, creating this energy and excitement that has you running from room to room with your emotions flying high. So let's answer the question right now. Does this game ever reach those heights? Yes, at times. It has a handful of sequences that will have you shouting, let's go. But believing that this is reflective of the whole is just asking to be disappointed. So let's all just take a second to come back down to earth, because in doing so, you allow yourself to appreciate and enjoy this chapter for what it is, and not what you imagine it to be. Yo, we get it. Can you just talk about the game already? Yes, here we go. Shadowbringers is the game that I wanted. Shadowbringers is the game that I was waiting for. Where Stormblood felt like an incremental upgrade, iPhone 2 to iPhone 3, Shadowbringers feels like a generational leap, iPhone 3 to 4. Remember those wow moments I mentioned in the other videos? Yep, they're back. And they're here to slap your senses silly. Design. Wow. Dungeons? Wow. Characters and writing? Wow. Combat? We've hit peak flow state. And music? You know, I consider myself rock neutral, but it's even got me saying lahi. I mean, have you heard the main theme? Let's listen to the main theme. And there's plenty of other tracks on the level. The team has designed and crafted a fantastic, a complete, satisfying experience that will delight your eyes, your ears, and your heart. This is a game with dimension and layers. It echoes what came before, incorporating story beats, structure, and set pieces that will remind you of not only the other expansions, but other games entirely. God of War 3, Kingdom Hearts, Near Automata, to name a few. 
you'll see their reflections and feel their influence as you play through the game. And making those connections becomes its own kind of joy, like a walk down memory lane. To see the greatest hits being represented here makes Shadowbringers feel like a love letter, an homage to the games that paved the way before it. Furthermore, this game has finally decided to embrace its true nature and become the single player adventure it was destined to be. That's a joke. Kind of. Aside from three fights, you can play through the main story entirely on your own, like I did at 4 in the morning. And I, for one, am not ashamed to say that I ran every dungeon using the trust system. Not because there was no one else to queue, but because it just felt so right finally having the Scions there with you, fighting by your side like a true team, even if they refuse to use their AoE attacks. Come on, Yustola. It's called Flare. Get with the program. And yet, while Shadowbringers has much to celebrate, it is not without its own missteps. Playing through this game made me feel like I was on a roller coaster, but not the emotional roller coaster you may be thinking of. It's not so much a case of going from happiness highs to sadness and despair and back, but rather, this game has moments where it ramps up its pacing, spiking your excitement, only to then turn around and say, ah uh, ah uh, ah, uh, not so fast, as it throws down a bunch of speed bumps to slow your roll. Instead of a smoother, gradual buildup, this expansion disguises its incline by having you go up and down, up and down, all throughout the journey, which at times had me feeling confused and wanting. The peaks, while high, are separated by some pretty wide valleys, which is again, why I'm warning you not to expect the level of action and energy you see in the trailer. But aside from that, there really isn't much more to complain about. At least, not from this camp. So let's dive a little deeper to see what makes this game shine. Never have I been more keenly aware that I was in a theme park than when I arrived in the first. The environments here are filled with color, depth, and detail, creating grand visual spectacles that rival any theme park I've ever visited. I love it. If you're going to go different, be bold and go all the way, like they've done here. Let us play in spaces that we would never encounter in real life. And the similarities don't end there. Just like how theme parks are a smash-up of different themes and environments from around the world, so too has this game been designed to exist in a similar fashion. The world of the first, diminished as it is, is clearly split into distinct biomes, each beautifully designed and defined by their strong colors, thematically contrasting the blank whiteness that represents the light, our antagonistic force. With all of these different zones being brought together, you can't help but feel like you're taking a walk through Disneyland. You've got Frontierland, Adventureland, Fantasyland, and Club 33 over here as your playgrounds, with dungeons spread across the zones serving as the rides. Speaking of dungeons, they have once again been expertly woven into the MSQ, feeling for me reminiscent of Heavensward, but have now been transformed into these big set pieces and climaxes of the story. They've done it. They've leveled up once again, and as they are now, they've become something of a performance, a capstone, an attraction all their own. Colors and detail fill the screen, pulling your attention this way and that, and make it hard to want to concentrate on fighting. The sets change multiple times, giving us a variety of locales and scenes to run through that each tell their own story. And the devs have even found ways to make your typical underground ruin more interesting, adding in that little extra spice to surprise and delight you in ways you weren't expecting. Bravo. It's almost as if I'm actually on a Disneyland ride. Now, even though I say this, none of this is really new. 
you can see the different pieces they used to build these experiences in previous games. You can trace their progression, but when you're playing through 14, expansion to expansion, it's sometimes hard to pick out and notice those smaller incremental improvements, especially when they're still in their fledgling states. Here, it's all been refined, it's all been polished, synergized, and it shows. If you look at where we started and where we are today, wow. This is the evolution, the product of all the iterations that came before, and it deserves to be praised. I'm excited to see how much further dungeons can be pushed, and I hope the team continues to be bold with both color and environment design, because they have truly made this experience memorable and unique. And if it hasn't happened already, please, please, please give these teams a raise, or a bonus, or both. Up to this point, it feels like the story has operated in this manner. Events first, characters second. Basically, an event-driven narrative. Shadowbringers flips the script and focuses your attention not so much on the what, but the who. Because it is through the characters, their perspectives, their struggles and actions, that we come to understand the real story being told. For as grand as it may feel, Shadowbringers' narrative is really just about people, and how they have come to survive and cope with overwhelming tragedy. How do people react when faced with their own mortality and imminent destruction? What will people do when they are left with nothing, just the broken and scattered pieces of their world? Do they fight? Do they give in? Make a bargain? Bury themselves in work? Shut down emotionally? Turn to the bottle? This game asks, what will people do when they are desperate? when they're at the end of their rope? What will they cling to in order to keep themselves going? And more importantly, why? All the characters, main cast, side cast, and villains are connected in this way. And through exploring these smaller, more personal stories, we become further invested in this world and its inhabitants. It becomes more real to us. We can relate and empathize with the people we encounter even if we don't agree with the answer or solution they chose. The characters here pack a punch. They are what give this story its meaning and impact. Through excellent writing and voice acting, they have been allowed to flourish and are given so much more depth, complexity, and dimension. Villains no longer feel like they jumped out of a Saturday morning cartoon. We understand their history, their motivation, and the lines start to blur. It's not so black and white there's a lot of gray. And we finally found someone with the balls to call us on our shit. The true endgame boss has arrived, and you do not want to make them angry. We also get much needed time with each of the Scions. At last, they have revealed themselves to us and shown us who they are underneath the armor, which is something I've wanted since the beginning. And it's not all doom and gloom either. We get to see them in moments of levity, to witness those silly character-to-character -character interactions that may do nothing to move the plot forward, but are no less important because they establish and reaffirm that the Scions are not just co-workers bound by a common cause, but are a family that likes spending time with each other, which is a dynamic I felt has been lacking up to this point. And the side characters? They know how to get you. Their stories and contributions feel just as important as the main cast. They breathe life into this world, filling in our knowledge about history, lore, and what society has come to be. They are the support that makes the first feel alive, feel lived in, and without them, this game wouldn't hit the same. And ultimately, we all know the real reason why we're here. It's okay, you don't have to hide it. You're among friends, and this is not just me projecting. For a game with as many characters as it has, Shadowbringers does its cast justice, finding ways to make you care about each and every one you meet, which is no easy task. I really think that when you look back on this game, at least in terms of the MSQ, you'll remember your time with the characters and how they made you feel throughout the story. 
more so than the details of the plot. Because at the end of the day, they are what we connect and latch onto. It's not the events that make you cry, it's the characters that do. As you may have guessed, I like this expansion. I like it a lot. And even though I'm now contributing to the hype problem in my own way, I hope I've given you a deeper understanding of what you can expect or what it may mean when you hear something like, Shadowbringers is amazing. But I don't claim to speak for everyone. This is just my perspective and my experience. So take it with a grain of salt and decide for yourself if this sounds like the experience for you. As for me, I'm about to head back in. I still need to level the rest of my jobs, get some mounts and relic weapons, and make unique fashion sets for each role. Or maybe job. Yeah, definitely for each job. And I need to try the deep dungeons. There's some stuff I want from there, and hit up Eureka and Boja, and finish up my Beast Tribe quest, and maybe it's time to start getting If you made it to the end, you are the chocolate to my peanut butter. Thank you for taking the time to listen to my opinions about this game, and I hope you enjoyed the ride. If you're wondering where we go from here, there's still some videos I'd like to make about 14. As for the next game, here's what I'm looking at. That's the hint for anyone that wants to guess. I hope I didn't make it too obscure or too obvious. Anyway, I'll catch you all next time. Bye!